What is up, YouTube? My name is Carla from Teaching Trends. Welcome to my channel, everyone. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. To those of you who are here for the first time, it's very nice to have you here. Welcome. Just going to remind you a little bit of what I do on my channel. I talk to new creators who are looking for new opportunities, how to start their channel, and I work in healthcare. So I teach a lot about healthcare students, jobs, remote jobs, and anything you can learn. So just take a look here at my playlist, hit that tab, and I've got a little bit of something for everybody here. That being said, we are going to get right into this video and what I'm going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking about EKG and electrical conduction. We're going to be talking about this electrical thing you see going on over here with the heart and the electrical conduction system. It's very important we learn about this when we're talking about ECG or EKG because ECG stands for electrocardiogram. So we have to talk about this electrical activity right here that you see on my screen. In a previous video, I talked about blood flow and I'll put that link up here to the right somewhere where you can click on it. Blood flow takes place because of this electrical conduction system. In order for blood to travel through our heart, we need this electrical conduction system to shock our heart in essence and push down on the heart, squeeze down and allows our heart to circulate that blood throughout the body. The electrical conduction system has different parts to it. The SA node, the AV node, the bundle of His, the left and right bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. This is an electrical pathway that actually assists in getting that electrical activity to the heart and allows it to shock it so that it can pump and beat. Starting at the beginning of the electrical conduction system is the SA node. The SA node is the sinoatrial node. The SA node is the heart's natural pacemaker. The AV node is the backup pacemaker. That's the atrioventricular node. The bundle of His that you see almost in the center, it's more of the processing center. It tells you where to send that charge. The bundle of His then sends the electrical charge down to the left and right bundle branches. Those left and right bundle branches transport the charge and the charge that is dropped off to the heart through the Purkinje fibers, those Purkinje fibers at the very end of the bundle branches will shock the heart and the heart beats. The amount of energy that comes from this SA node or the natural pacemaker is about one millivolt. And that's important because when we talk about EKG interpretation later on in a different video, we will get into why that amount of energy is important. So let's talk a little bit about what we just saw. The SA node is the sinoatrial node. It's the natural pacemaker. It beats about 60 to 100 beats per minute. This natural pacemaker sets the pace for our pulse or how many beats per minute our heart beats. The average is about 80. The pacemaker puts out about one millivolt or one one thousandth of one volt of energy. And notice there it says 10 small boxes high. We'll get to that in another video. The AV node is the backup pacemaker. It goes about 40 to 60 beats per minute. So if the SA node, the natural pacemaker fails, the AV node will take over. The bundle of His that we mentioned will process the charge. The left and right bundle branches will transport the charge to the myocardium, which is the heart muscle. And the Purkinje fibers shocks the heart with the one millivolt charge. Now, many people wanna know, well, where does the charge come from in the pacemaker? Where does that charge generate from? 
that one millivolt charge is generated from electrolytes going in and out of the natural pacemaker. The electrolytes are sodium, calcium, and potassium, and those are negatively and positively charged. They go in and out the pacemaker, the SA node, and they generate that one millivolt charge that is then sent through this entire electrical conduction system. So when we're looking at this electrical system, this one millivolt goes into from that SA node, from that sodium, calcium, and potassium are electrolytes. Those electrolytes in and out of the cell generate a charge that is one millivolt. It goes then from the SA node to the AV node, to the bundle of His. Then it transports it down through the left and right bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers drop off that one millivolt charge. So when we see this electrical conduction system, the electrical conduction system is responsible for creating the cardiac cycle waveform. When we see this waveform that we see to the right-hand side, P, Q, R, S, T, we know that the electrical conduction system has taken the electricity from the SA node through that entire electrical system all the way to the Purkinje fibers to shock the heart, and one cardiac cycle is complete. Every single heartbeat will have a waveform that appears on an EKG. A normal waveform should look like you see on the screen, P, Q, R, S, and T. The P, Q, R, S, and T is the electrical representation of one heartbeat. The complex is made of different waveforms and the waveforms happen to be labeled letters of the alphabet, P, Q, R, S, and T. We're gonna now talk about what each of these waveforms mean. So in the electrical conduction system, we have the P wave. The P wave represents atrial depolarization. Depolarization is electrical contraction. So anytime we see this P wave at the beginning of the waveform, it signifies the contraction of the atria. So looking at the heart's electrical activity from the SA node, we will see here that this SA node that we have here on our screen is shocking our heart and the atria is lighting up. Notice how almost rounded the atria kind of looks, very similar to the P wave. So if you're looking at the SA node's activity and creating the P wave, this electrical activity that you see in the atria creates the image on the EKG that creates the P wave. Anytime you see the P wave on an EKG, you know that we are looking at atrial depolarization. We are looking at the atria contracting from the electrical activity in the electrical conduction system. The next thing we're gonna look at is our QRS complex. Our QRS complex is going to be ventricular depolarization meaning when the ventricles contract, we will see the QRS complex. So we're going to look at that next step of the electrical conduction after the electricity goes from the atria down to the ventricles. As we see, the electrical activity that comes from our atria, that atria is the top, and we have the ventricles at the bottom. Notice how the ventricles almost look like a V shape. And take notice of the EKG at the bottom of the screen.
When the atria contracts, it creates the P wave. When the ventricles contract, it creates the QRS. P wave, atria, QRS. Notice how that QRS looks like a V. If you look at the QRS, it kind of reminds you of the same shape of the ventricles that we have on the bottom. So one more time, P wave is rounded, gives us a atria P wave and the QRS looks like the V. So we're gonna go back to our slides here. So when we see our P wave, our P wave and what it is doing, that is the contraction of the atria. That is called atrial depolarization or atrial contraction. Those are the top chambers of the heart. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization, meaning the ventricles or the bottom chambers contracting. Last but not least, we have our T wave. And our T wave is responsible for ventricular repolarization, which is our ventricles relaxing or resting. So we're gonna go in and look at that T wave. And we're gonna look at the whole process from the T wave to resting. As the ventricles rest, the T wave is created. So let's go through our images and see how this goes. So we're looking at our very first image, which is gonna be our P wave image. The two top chambers of the heart are the atria contracting. The atria contracting creates that rounded P wave, two top chambers of the heart there. After we have our P wave that is created, we then have our QRS complex. P wave for the atria, ventricles create the QRS. Take note of the image below the heart. P wave, atria, QRS, ventricle. And last but not least, we have our T wave for our ventricular resting. So remember the electrical conduction system electrically contracts, which is depolarization and rest repolarization. The top part of the heart, which is the atria, the atria contracts and creates the P wave. The ventricles contract and create the QRS. The electrical conduction system, SA node, AV node, bundle of His, left and right bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. This electrical conduction system gives off one millivolt of energy. This electrical energy or charge comes from electrolytes. You want to look at what all of this means in terms of your EKG. We are going to scroll to the very important notes that I've put together. The SA node is the natural pacemaker. The AV node is the backup pacemaker. The bundle of His processes the charge. The left and right bundle branches transport the charge. The Purkinje fibers shock the heart with a one millivolt charge. That charge comes from sodium, calcium, and potassium, which are electrolytes. One heartbeat is one complete cardiac cycle. The one cardiac cycle that is complete or the complete cardiac cycle is represented by one waveform, one PQRSNT. Depolarization is an electrical discharge. 
and repolarization is resting or recovery. We're gonna get into talking about cardiac defibrillar devices and why do we record heart rhythms and some cardiac procedures in our next video. We're also gonna do a blood flow. So for those of you who haven't seen my blood flow video, this is just a quick reminder. The right side of the heart is deoxygenated. The left side of the heart is oxygenated. The right side is on the left side and the left side is on the right side. But why is that in the image? If you know the answer, let me know down in the comments. <laughs>